about the transforms of derivatives and how to use the transforms of derivatives to solve initial value problems. So this brings us to a theorem that deals with how to take the Laplace transform of a derivative. If f, f prime, all the way up to the n minus first derivative of f are all continuous on the interval from zero to infinity and are of exponential order, and if the nth derivative of f is piecewise continuous on the interval from zero to infinity, then the Laplace transform of the nth derivative of f is gonna equal s to the n power times big F of s minus s to the n minus first power times f of zero minus s to the n minus second power times f prime of zero minus s to the n minus third power times f double prime of zero, so on and so forth, where the power of s decreases until it goes to zero, and the derivative on f increases until we get to n minus one. And note that in this expression, capital F of s, so big F of s, is defined to be the Laplace transform of the function f of t. Right, so some common forms when you're solving your differential equations, oftentimes you're going to see the variable y. And so if we take the Laplace transform of y of t, that'll just be big Y of s. The Laplace transform of y prime of t would be s times big Y of s minus y of zero. The Laplace transform of y double prime of t would be s squared big Y of s minus s times y of zero minus y prime of zero. And the Laplace transform of the third derivative of y of t is equal to s cubed times big Y of s minus s squared times y of zero minus s times y prime of zero minus y double prime of zero. And each additional derivative that we add, we'll just add on additional terms. And you know, you can see the form that it's taking, you can see the pattern. So you should be able to take the Laplace transform of the fifth derivative, say. All right. So in order to use these derivatives to solve initial value problems with the Laplace transform, we're going to take the following steps. The first thing that we'll do is we'll take the Laplace transform of both sides of our differential equation. And essentially what this does is this transforms our differential equation, which has derivatives in it, to an algebraic equation. Right? We can solve that resulting algebraic equation for big Y of S, and then we can take the inverse Laplace transform of big Y of S to figure out what little y of t would have been or should be. So let's do an example. So we have y double prime plus 9y equals e to the t with the initial conditions y of 0 equals 0 and y prime of 0 equals 0. So to solve this initial value problem, the first thing we'll do is we'll take the Laplace transform of each term. So the Laplace transform of y double prime plus nine times the Laplace transform of y should equal the Laplace transform of e to the t. All right, when we take those Laplace transforms, we get s squared big Y of s minus s times y of zero minus y prime of zero plus nine big Y of s equals one over s minus one. We know that y of zero equals zero and y prime of zero equals zero, so we can plug in our initial conditions. Those two middle terms will go away. So we have s squared y of s minus zero minus zero plus nine big y of s equals one over s minus one. We can simplify the left-hand side by combining our big y of s terms together. So that's gonna give us s squared plus nine times big y of s equals one over s minus one. And then to get big Y of s by itself, we'll divide both sides by s squared plus nine. So we get big Y of s equals one over s minus one times s squared plus nine. Now that we've solved for big Y of s and we have it all by itself, so we have big Y of s equals one divided by s minus one times s squared plus nine, we're going to take the inverse Laplace transform of that, and that'll be this, that'll give us our solution for the differential equation. So to take the inverse Laplace transform, we're gonna to need to break this up using partial fractions. So if we have one over S minus one times S squared plus nine, 
we use the factors in the denominator to set up our partial fraction decomposition. The s minus 1 term will give us a over s minus 1, and the s squared plus 9 will give us bs plus c over s squared plus 9. We'll multiply this whole equation by the common denominator, s minus 1 times s squared plus 9. And on the left-hand side, those will cancel out and give us 1. On the right-hand side, with the first term, the s minus 1s will cancel out, so we'll get a times s squared plus 9. And for the second term, the s, squared plus, the s squared plus 9s will cancel out, giving us bs plus c times s minus 1. We can simplify this expression. So 1 equals as squared plus 9a plus bs squared minus bs plus cs minus c. And then we can equate our coefficients to figure out what a, b, and c are. So if we start with our s squared terms, we have a s squared and b s squared on the right, and there is no s squared term on the left, so 0 has to equal a plus b. If we look at our s terms, again, there is no s on the left, and we have negative bs plus cs on the right, so 0 equals negative b plus c. And if we look at our constant terms, we have 1 on the left, 9a minus c on the right, so 1 has to equal 9a minus c. This gives us a system of three equations with three unknowns, which we can solve for a, b, and c. So from the first equation, if 0 equals a plus b, that means b has to equal a negative a. We're going to go ahead and take that and plug that into the second equation. So if 0 equals negative b plus c, that means c equals b, which has to equal negative a. And then we'll plug that into the third equation. So 1 equals 9a minus a negative a. So 1 equals 10a. That means a is 1 tenth. And if a is 1 tenth, that means b and c both have to be negative 1 tenth. So now that we know what a, b, and c are, we can plug them back into our partial fraction decomposition. So big Y of s equals 1 tenth over s minus 1 plus a negative 1 tenth s minus 1 tenth over s squared plus 9. We can take the inverse Laplace transform of this. So the inverse Laplace of big Y of s equals 1 tenth times the inverse Laplace of 1 over s minus 1 minus 1 tenth times the inverse Laplace of s over s squared plus 9 minus 1 tenth times the inverse Laplace of 1 over s squared plus 9. Now we want to make sure that our inverse Laplace transforms match up with our formulas exactly. For our first two terms, they match up with their respective formulas, but for the third term, that negative 1 tenth times the inverse Laplace of 1 over s squared plus 9, we need to have a 3 in the numerator. So we'll multiply that numerator by 3, and we'll divide by 3 on the outside so we're not changing the problem. Now all three terms match up with their perspective forms, so we can go ahead and take our inverse Laplace transforms. The inverse Laplace transform of big Y of s is going to give us little y of t. 1 tenth times the inverse Laplace of 1 over s minus 1 will give us 1 tenth times e to the t minus 1 tenth times the inverse of s over s squared plus 3 squared will give us minus 1 tenth times the cosine of 3t, and then minus 1 over 10 times 3, so that's 1 over 30, times the inverse Laplace of 3 over s squared plus 3 squared will give us a negative 1 over 30 times the sine of 3t. So this will be the solution to our differential equation. Let's look at a second example. So this time we have y prime minus y equals 2 times the cosine of 5t with an initial condition of y of 0 equals 0. Again, we start by taking the Laplace transform of everything in our differential equation. So the Laplace transform of y prime minus the Laplace transform of y will equal the Laplace transform of 2 times the cosine of 5t. That's going to give us s times big Y of s minus y of 0 for the Laplace transform of y prime minus big Y of s for the Laplace transform of y equals 2s over s squared plus 25. We'll go ahead and apply our initial condition. So y of 0 equals 0. We'll plug that in, and that goes away. 
and then we'll factor out the, uh, the y of s from the other two terms. So we get big Y of s times s minus 1 equals 2s over s squared plus 25. To get big Y of s by itself, we'll divide both sides by s minus 1. And that gives us big Y of s equals 2s over s squared plus 25 times s minus 1. Now that we've found big Y of s, so now that we have it all by itself, we can take our Laplace transform to find the solution to our differential equation. So we need to break this up using partial fractions. If we have 2s over s squared plus 25 times s minus 1, that's going to break up to be a over s minus 1 plus bs plus c over s squared plus 25. We'll multiply everything by the common denominator. So 2s equals a times s squared plus 25 plus bs plus c times s minus 1. So 2s equals as squared plus 25a plus bs squared plus cs minus bs minus c. We'll equate our coefficients. So if we start with our s squared terms, there's nothing on the left. We have an a plus b on the right. So 0 equals a plus b. If we look at our s terms, we have a 2 on the left and a cs minus bs on the right. So 2 has to equal a negative b plus c. And if we look at our constant terms, there's no constant on the left. There's a 25a minus c on the right. So 0 has to equal 25a minus c. So again, this gives us a system of three equations with three unknowns, which we can solve. If 0 equals a plus b, that means that b equals a negative a. If 0 equals 25a minus c, that means c equals a positive 25a. So we can plug those two things into the middle equation. So 2 equals negative b plus c. We'll plug negative a in for b to get a positive a. We'll plug 25a in for c, so we get 2 equals a plus 25a. And if we solve that, that gives us 2 equals 26a. We divide by 26 to get a equals 1 13th. If a is 1 13th, that means b is negative 1 13th, and c has to be 25 over 13. So now we know the coefficients. We know our a, our b, and our c. We can rewrite our problem. Big Y of s equals 1 13th over s minus 1 plus a negative 1 13th s over s squared plus 25 plus 25 over 13 divided by s squared plus 25. We'll take the inverse Laplace transform of everything. So the inverse Laplace of big Y of s will equal the inverse Laplace of 1 over 13 times the over s minus 1 plus a negative 1 over 13 s over s squared plus 25 plus 25 over 13 over s squared plus 25. We break that up term by term. So the inverse Laplace of big Y of s will equal 1 13th times the inverse Laplace of 1 over s minus 1 minus 1 13th times the inverse Laplace of s over s squared plus 25. We're only going to pull 5 thirteenths out, so we get 5 thirteenths times the inverse Laplace, and we'll leave the other 5 in the numerator so that we can match up with our form, so 5 over s squared plus 25. Now we're ready to take our inverse Laplace transforms, so inverse Laplace of big Y of s will be little y of t, 1 13th times the inverse of 1 over s minus 1 gives us 1 13th e to the t, minus 1 13th times the inverse Laplace of s over s squared plus 25 will give us a negative 1 13th cosine 5t, and then 5 thirteenths times the inverse Laplace of 5 over s squared plus 25 will give us a 5 thirteenths times the sine of 5t. And so that'll be the solution to our differential equation.